We're talking about a peasant's revolt in this sense. It is a widespread and popular rejection of essentially the way Nigeria has been run. In this sense, there are interesting parallels with Watt Tyler in the 14th century England, uh, the peasants' revolt in, in, um, in Martin Luther's time, and there are also certain interesting Chinese parallels. It is also a religious civil war within Islam because the vocabulary of revolt in northern Nigeria is Islamic. And further, the establishment being revolted against in northern Nigeria is also Islamic. So you have, it's almost a kind of layered effect. I find it interesting that Boko Haram itself says almost nothing about uh, economic development, better health, water programs, um, it says a lot about education, but it says almost nothing about economic development. What it talks about over and over and over again is the creation of God's kingdom on earth. The idea being that if you can reorganize society around Sharia, in fact, these problems will largely take care of themselves. Now, I said something like 12 states in northern Nigeria have Sharia. They do indeed. Boko Haram says, and this is perfectly true, that the Sharia penalties are imposed on the poor, but not on the rich. So you go steal a loaf of bread, and your hand is hacked off. Go steal five million naira by, by jimmying contracts, and nothing happens. So there's this element of anger, of incohate rage, uh, that runs all through this, if that helps. <laughs>